She is a communication specialist, project manager, and radio personality from Huntsville, Alabama. She first got her start in media at her college radio station and has worked for several stations and platforms over the past 15 years plus. She's currently the late morning host for an online radio platform, X360 Music. Her love for all things communications has pushed her to pursue her recent master's degree and soon to enter the field of communications coaching with the emphasis on love and relationships. This is one reason why I had to bring her on the show. <laughs> she is a mom of three. Her oldest head into college this fall. In her spare time, she enjoys traveling, sleeping, spending time with her amazing partner, and binge watching reality TV shows. She looks forward to sharing her perspective and art on effective communication with the world one day. Bravehearts community, let's show some love to Kamisha. How are you doing this morning? Good morning. Good morning. I'm doing great. How are you? I am doing great. I was ready for this interview um, because, <laughs> you know, I read the tweets. And I'm like, I love mature people, so I had to bring you on. Thank you. Yes, I love yours as well. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. No problem. No problem. Let's talk about how dating has changed you in a good way. And I'm glad that okay. we are having this conversation because a lot of times we look at this from the negative perspective, but you have a different perspective on this. So would, how would you describe your dating experiences from past, mostly good or bad? I think everyone's had some good and bad, honestly. Um, I feel like my dating experiences have been a fail up until this point. I feel like until I got to the point to where I needed to heal from my past, from my childhood, from love and dating in general, then it took a turn for the better. And then it became great experiences. So, you know, growing up, I didn't have my biological father in my life. And I feel like as a lot of young girls, that has an effect on our dating lives, how we see ourselves and show up in relationships. And so once I got older through trial and error, after not seeing healthy and loving relationships around me, I had to kind of piece my own together or what I thought would be healthy. So it wasn't until I got to the point of bumping my head a few times uh, to where I had to sit down and realize, okay, this is not healthy. This is not okay. I need to make a change for the better. And so through healing, I was able to have a positive, I guess, part or positive aspect to my relationships. Mm. Now, did that come when you were, as far as having positive experiences, that came when you were a little more older, a little more mature? It did, it mm. did. It took us a while, it took me a while to kind of mature and come into myself and to learn more about myself. But absolutely, I mean, some get it young, some actually take a while to get it. And I, I must say I was in my thirties by the time I realized and understood and got to the point of healthy relationships. Mm. Yeah, because I was going to ask, I was like, you know, for the younger listeners, because I'm starting to get a new demographic of listeners that's like 25. Mm -hmm. so, so I wonder, just like giving hope to those young ladies, it's like, oh, <laughs> do I have to wait until I'm in my 30s to, to find like love, you know? Yeah, you really don't. I mean, honestly, it's important to have a good circle or community around you of mature, healthy, happy relationships to kind of take note from. I mean, even scientifically, we're not fully developed mentally and emotionally until we're 25. So if you can learn early, go for it. I mean, take your time, don't rush. Think about your decisions and how they're going to impact you in the future. And I think that makes a world of difference. Once I changed my circle and surrounded myself with mature adults who actually know a little bit about dating, you know, our parents, they do know more than we, we think sometimes. You know, we're hard-headed and we don't want to listen, but... Once we get to that point and have that good circle, it helps us out in the long run. Mm, so community is important. I'm glad you said yes, that. Yes, very, very. Because we live in this Lone Ranger society <laughs> today where it's just like, I got it out the mud. I don't need anybody. And I'm just like, I get a little nervous sometimes when, you know, to get it out the mud, people. Because I'm like, you did yes. by yourself. Yeah, that's not a badge of honor. I mean, I think having, you know, great people around you is the badge of honor. I mean, if we can't help those around, then it's all in vain. Like, it's generational, like, you know, over time. So if my mom did it by herself, you know, that that's for me, being a strong Black woman is not necessarily a badge of honor when you have to do it on your own. Having help is a luxury, and it's okay. It's welcome. Mm, I love that. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> 
Because, yeah, because we need that out here. We don't have to do it by ourselves. We get some help. We don't. People. Yeah. It's not a badge of honor. So hear me, Brave Horse. That is not a badge of honor to do that by yourself. There Absolutely. is somebody there. What What's the one quote that says, if uh, once the student is ready, the teacher will show up or something like that? Yes. You have to be open and willing. That's definitely the key. Open and willing to learn and to make changes and get to a point to where you're like, okay, I need to do better. And once you're ready, it'll take off from there. Mm, I, I totally agree. So how has dating changed you? You want to talk about that in detail? <laughs> dating has healed me. I know a lot of people have, you know, horror stories. Oh, I'm bitter now. And I don't want to date and I won't do this. I think it has brought about a standard for me. And a couple years ago, back around 2019, I was in this toxic relationship. I mean, <laughs> Terrible. I thought he was the love of my life at the time. You know, I'm going through drama with him, you know, infidelities and he's lying. And it was really tough. And it took me to get to the point of that relationship and me ultimately walk, ultimately walking away. Um, I ran to the therapist and that was my first time in therapy. And at the end of a year with my therapist, she said to me, you know, some people find healing through relationships and through love. And so all these years I've been, oh, I love love and I love relationships and they're great. But I didn't realize that my healing and my turn would take part from dealing with healing from therapy. So although I would not go back <laughs> and redo this again, I know people say I wouldn't do anything over and maybe who I am. No, let me just I would not go back and do it again if I had to. But I am glad that I came out on the side, other side and that I learned from it. And then I did find a healing from that relationship and that I did learn. And so I dated a little bit after that relationship. Great guys, but I had the tools and which is why I recommend therapy to anyone, whether you think you need it or not, it's a mental health thing. So just as you would go to the doctor for a checkup, mental health is just as important as your physical health, emotional health and well wellness is also important too. So once I got to the point of healing and therapy with her, I was able to have the tools to proceed with relationships. And so my relationship or a guy I dated after that didn't really work, but I was proud of myself because I picked a better partner to be in a relationship with. And once that ended, it was like, okay, it didn't work out, but he's a great guy. I picked a better guy. And now ultimately I'm in an amazing relationship with an amazing man for almost a year. So it worked out for me. So yeah. dating did heal me. I got a, I guess a great thing from dating um, and it can do that if you allow it and if you're open to that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So do you think it's okay to, because some people have different aspects on the whole dating thing. So do you think it's better to date? Because a lot of times people say it's better to get to know yourself, you know, go take a, a, a trip to Dubai by yourself and all these things or how do you feel about dating around? Cause sometimes that can have a negative connotation too. It's like, you don't need to be dating all these people at one time. <laughs> so where do you find a happy medium? What do you think? Um, honestly, for me, I mean, when it comes to dating, obviously you need to know what you want, right? So if you don't know yourself, if you haven't found yourself or if you haven't taken the time to get to know what your needs and wants are, you can't date effectively. So that's step one. Jumping from relationship to relationship is not okay. <laughs> Especially if you haven't learned anything, it's okay to take a little time, you know, to relax and, you know, chill out. But some people don't need that. So it just depends on the person. However, I am an advocate of dating several people at a time, okay. as in getting to know each, you know, the person, not necessarily entering into a sexual relationship, but just getting to know different people. It's not exclusive. You have options, you get to know this person, you get to know this person. And that's just what has worked for me. And then ultimately, usually someone stands out, right? So there's a guy, you know, I know what qualities I'm looking for. I'm getting to know several people. We're hanging out, I'm getting to know them. I think the key also is letting them know, hey, I'm just dating, I'm getting to know people. It's not a secret, <laughs> it's not, you know, so you get to know them and then that one person will stand out. You'll have more chemistry usually with that one person mm -hmm. and it keeps your options open. And then once you two decide to enter into an exclusive relationship, then that's when you, you know, get rid of others, I guess, for lack of a better term, but you move on 
you let them know, hey, you know, I'm in a relationship or I found someone and that's kind of how it has worked for me. So I'm an advocate. I say date them all, yeah. but let them know and be open. That doesn't mean sleep with everyone. That doesn't mean, you know, go away. You know, it's, it just depends on the person, but that's just what has worked for me. Mm. No, I love it because and I'm glad that you made the clarity of like, you don't have to sleep with everybody because a lot of times people think when you're dating, they're like, oh, you're smashing seven different guys. Like, right. <laughs> you know, right. People, and yeah, and I, I've realized that that some men can't handle, you know, a woman who wants to date. And I think it's important just to find what works for you and to find someone who's on the same page. So some people can just date one at a time. Some people can date several. But I think it's it's just important to be open during the process and enjoy it. I mean, dating should not be a task. It should not be a job. You should be able to enjoy it. If you're not able to, then look into that. Why am I not enjoying dating? What needs to be fixed, tweaked, healed? What am I looking for? What am I gaining from it? Or how does it benefit me? Mm, I love it. I love it. And I love yeah. the details that you give. So you don't have to uh, smash your seven dates. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Please and don't. If, and if you do, that's what you do. That's that's nobody's trying to police your body. Right. No uh, judgment here. Yeah. Uh, I think it'll kind of cloud your judgment and it'll it'll be a mess you know, at the end of the day. But again, what works for you works for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have that. And then we also have, I love that you said, not basically not ghosting. Like if you have seven guys on your roster, if you got an NBA team, you got five and then you got two on the bench. <laughs> so if you have seven, I like that you said it's good to let those, those uh, five or six know that they didn't make the roster good. It's true. It's true. Communication is very important. As you know, I'm an advocate um, for effective, clear communication. And honestly, men are hunters. If you let them know, hey, you know, I'm getting to know people, um, you know, they're going to show up for the, you know, their best selves. But caution to that, pay attention, you know, and, and date with intent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's true, because a lot of times people can't handle um ending i won't say a relationship but just dating mm -hmm. somebody and then you don't really have to say like in like you can still be friends with somebody it's true it's true and it doesn't have to be this grand oh my gosh she doesn't like me or oh he doesn't want me anymore it's okay like we're not for everyone <laughs> so it's about finding compatibility it's like hey you know i think you're a great person you're just not you know the type of person that i want to pursue a relationship with and that's okay yeah it is yeah because guys struggle with 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 rejection. We struggle with that for the <laughs> most part, especially if we like you, you find, you know, you, <laughs> we got to smell the perfume. We went on a date and it's just like, oh, I didn't make the cut. And some guys take it because and I guess I'm telling my age back in the day, if you got rejected, it was just like, I will never see her again. Like, <laughs> she didn't call it's me it's okay it's, <laughs> it's okay. sometimes rejection works out for your better good you know instead of being stuck or dealing with someone who's not for you you know in the long run it work it can work out sometimes rejection is just okay it's god's way of saying i have something better in store for you mm, yeah yeah rejection is god's protection absolutely i like it <laughs> <laughs> let's have church <laughs> In the tweet you posted, it stated, wait, and, and I love this, to say, wait for the one who shatters every notion you've ever known love to be. Can you break that down for me? Yeah, I, I mean, I sometimes I sit around and I think about how far I've come in my dating and love journey and how right now I'm in the happiest place. Emotionally, I've got a great partner. He's amazing. And I feel like once I got to the point of healing or changing things in my life that I needed to in terms of dating, through therapy, I was able to be loved differently. It wasn't just, I need someone to make me feel amazing. Or I need someone to feel this boy. It was, I need someone, I want someone that I can share myself with, my love with, my life with. And so once I got to the point of being in a healthy and happy relationship, I realized that my view of love changed. It's not what the fairy tales may, you know, say that it is. It can be at times. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like once you meet that person, I know for me, that made me view love differently, that for me was my person. So it's like, uh, he gets in my nerves, or I hate the way he chews, or the way he laughs, but I love him for who he is. And so once I got to that point, 
and realize that love has a basis of friendship, love has a basis of happiness and healthy boundaries. And once that changed for me, I realized, okay, this is a person worth waiting for. Mm -hmm. So I think once you end up with your person, you realize that you see things a little differently. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. Love it. So when dating, do we choose wrong or is the dating pool really that bad? Uh, <laughs> I, I would honestly say, personally speaking, you just choose wrong. I actually spoke with a relationship coach <laughs> a while ago and she said, "You we're choosing wrong because we don't know what we, what we want and what we're looking for. And so she told me, okay, figure out your non-negotiables, right? The things that are most important to you uh, the things that you want. I want a godly man. I want a man who's honest, has great character, disciplined, all of that. And then you date looking for that. And I think <laughs> that we need to go in intentionally with knowing, first of all, what we want, who we are, what our needs are, and date according to that. And so there are a lot of great men out there for ladies, and there are a lot of great women out there. But I feel like once you elevate yourself and become a better person, you'll attract better. And that's what I had to learn too, um, in changing my needs and how I projected myself and how I presented myself, I was able to attract a different type of person. So th the dating pool does suck. I won't, I won't lie about that. But however, there are still great candidates and you can find what you're looking for if you know what you want, if you date intentionally and you keep an open mind about it. Mm -hmm. That's good because I hear on social media, especially, you know, Twitter, my jam. I love Twitter. <laughs> you, me too. But I get on there and people are like, oh my God, the dating pool has pee in it. And I'm like, well, are you peeing in it? That's true. I mean, and, it, and if you're coming with that mindset, then you've already lost like half the battle, honestly. I mean, keep a positive mindset that there are great people out there and that you will find them. And you have to put yourself out there in a positive light and attract that and prepare yourself for that. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I, yeah. I I posted the other day. I said, uh, what, "What did I say?" I said, "I said you are what you attract, just like what you said." It's true, very much so, very much so, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and people were just, I said, "Oh my God, a hit dog a holler." The responses. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And now you attract. I mean, depending on the person, you, you attract lots of people. But mm -hmm. to take that further, you are what you entertain. Yes. So we're not here just to waste time. I mean, you have an option on who you choose to date, who you choose to spend your time with. So choose wisely. Mm -hmm. Totally agree with that. As we wind down on today's, because you dropped so many gems today. <laughs> I'm so glad you took some time out to be a guest on the show. What is the biggest mistake you see women make when dating and how can they fix it? Oh, do we have time? I mean, we, I have, we have time. <laughs> I can think of a couple. Okay, first, I would say we need to know what we want. We need to have a standard, um, know who we are, of course, what we want. But I feel like I'm going to have to bring this and tie this into communication. We need to listen. When we're getting to know a man, he's saying, oh, I'm not really ready for a relationship, or oh, I just got out of a relationship, or, you know, I'm just cool with just seeing where this goes. Listen to him. <laughs> You're not going to change his mind. You are not going to sex him into a relationship. You are going to get your feelings hurt. And so listen to what the man is telling you and ask the right questions as well. I mean, asking the right questions is very important um, in understanding what you're looking uh, for, what he's willing to give and where he's coming from. Take some time and, and research that. And I think also how you present yourself makes a difference if you're oh all these men are trash and you know i'll never find anyone good and, you know these mm -mm. like have a positive outlook on things and you never know you know what you'll attract so i feel like once we show up as ourselves once we know what we want ask the right questions and also listen with the intent to understand the man then you'll you'll be better off yeah because i had a friend of mine and she told me the other day that women, they, she said women, and I don't know if this is all, but she said a lot mm -hmm. of times when a man is talking to you, you, you hear, but in your head, you kind of project this into, yes. well, this is what I think he said. 
and then you it's transform true. it into what you what you think it should be. <laughs> it's true. One thing I've learned about men is that you guys are very simple. You say what you mean and you mean what you say. It's like, you know, you come in from work and, oh, I've had a long day. I just want to relax. Well, did I do something this morning? Did I upset him? Does he not want to be around me? No, he genuinely is just tired <laughs> and wants to relax. I laugh in that space. And so in understanding men, it's like, okay, take what he says at face value. And if you have questions or if you, you know, are not sure, ask him. I mean, men don't have a problem usually clarifying themselves. If they have good intent, you'll know and you'll understand. Mm -hmm. So really just listen with the intent to understand mm -hmm. and don't waste time. If you realize this guy is not, you know, what you're looking for or if you're not as interested as you thought you were, don't waste time, you know, keep it moving. And, and that's okay. Yeah, because I think sometimes we don't take the necessary time, like you said, to really know what you want. So just to take that necessary time, because when you don't know what you want, anybody that's attractive, you, you will take. It's true. It's true. And take your time in getting to know someone. You, you don't have to. I mean, I'm not talking five, six years dating, right. you know, if your your goal is marriage. But take the time to get to know the person, have conversations with the person, spend time with them. I mean, I'm an advocate of seeing the person in all of their seasons. See what they're like when they're frustrated and upset. See what they're like when they're happy. See what they're like around their parents. Their relationship with their mother is important. See how they tend to their children if they have them or their friends. See how they have a work-life balance. Are they disciplined? I had a friend <laughs> tell me once, show me a man who lacks discipline and I'll show you a cheater. And when I think back of the guys I've dated mm -hmm. and the guys that have been cheaters in past relationships, they lack discipline. They mm -hmm. couldn't stay on task. You know, they're starting a new fad diet or they're starting to work out in the gym. They don't have the mental stamina to continue. And so when that, when that transition or when the dry season happens or, you know, they make it forward with you, they'll be easily distracted. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that I've taken with me um, in turn when it comes to dating. Mm -hmm. I like that because I had a, I, I did a video, uh, I guess, shameless plug. It was called, how will I know if he's going to be a deadbeat dad? How, mm. how will I know? And I talked about that very thing as far as not being a finisher. Like what is the last thing that he's completed? Mm -hmm. did, did he finish reading the book? Did, you know, <laughs> it's like he'd been reading the five love languages for 10 years. And it's true. <laughs> you like what are the last thing did you finish did you finish the degree did you finish reading the book did you finish your desired weight loss goal just different little measures to let you know because people say yeah. well he 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 lied to me and he was a great guy and then he got me pregnant then he left but there are signs to let you know in advance mm -hmm. if really you're willing are. to pay attention it's true. Pay attention. Listen. How how is his relationship with his parents? How close is he to his family? How important is family to him? All of those things, you know, are important. And in some situations, you do get fooled. I mean, especially yeah, yeah. if you're rushing in, there is always an exception to every rule. But I feel like if you pay attention, a person can only hide who they are for so long. So That's pay right. attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because she'll be calling you talking about, but Kamisha, girl, he was tall. He was chocolate. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it, it happens. And I, I feel like as women too, sometimes we give too much too soon. And I, I had to learn that in therapy as well. I mean, respect and honesty and trust and all that is earned. So pay attention and over time, you know, give that. But if you're giving everything out the front door, then then you're going to run into some problems more than likely. Yeah, totally agree. Kamisha, this has been a wonderful segment. You have dropped so many gems, so much wisdom. Good, good, good. I'm excited about getting this out to the Bravehearts community and to also to your community as well. I want to, first of all, acknowledge you for the wisdom that you give. Uh, Thank acknowledge you, you for uh, just being transparent about you and your own personal life, because sometimes that could be challenging, especially in this social media world. Um, and I also want to acknowledge you for being a parent with your kids. And you have, I know you have a, 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 a child that's going off to college soon. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So <clears throat> uh, I just want to acknowledge you for all those things. And then also acknowledge you for 
being positive about love, I think we don't hear that enough. Kamisha, so where can people find you on social media? Can you give us your social media handles, all that other good stuff? Yes, so you can find me on Instagram and Twitter. They're both the same. Candidly, Kamisha. I don't know if you'll need to include that. Candidly is with a K and then my first name. Okay. Okay, awesome. Well, Bravehearts, you heard it here. Make sure you connect with Kamisha because she has wisdom for days, and especially for my young ladies. There is hope out here. So I, I'm, I'm glad that you took some time today to stop by. Brave Hearts community, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you share this with a friend because you never know who might need this. If you are listening on podcasts, on Apple Podcasts, make sure you leave a rating and review. That will put you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't love Amazon, right? So make sure you leave a rating and review. This is Sean Heineman with special guests. Misha. <laughs> All right, Brave Hearts community.